Okay, welcome. I'm doing an extra study here. One of them subjects I'm going to kick. And the computer's over here because I got to look at my, my laptop and read what we got. But we're going to do a study on Tammuz. T-A-M-M-U-Z. And the introductory to this study is Mary to Moose Mass. And that gets the idea of where we're going to go with this. And I'm going to give you the facts. I'm going to give you the Bible. And it's up to you. I can't force you. But when you're going to look at the pagan holiday. And it's your choice. That should I continue with them? Or should I do what the Bible says? This is historical fact. I'm going to try. And I can't do it for SoundCloud. I'm going to try it for YouTube. You see this? This is a page full of reference and bibliology. I have put in this document, I'm going to try to put it on YouTube. I'm going to put down the brains of the people that I got this from. I am borrowing the brain. I am, I am taking from fair use of copyrighted material to bring you Tamu. And to show you the error of, you'll find out, Easter and Christmas. And it has nothing to do with Bible. And we're going to let the facts, and I'm going to put the facts, and I can put the facts on YouTube, and I can't put them on SoundCloud, but I may be able to put them in the description. And if I put the people that I got their brains from, And I am talking about books of three, uh, two Babylon. I am talking about well-known people and archaeologists. And their books. And I will give you the international uh, book number and the page numbers. And you got people from Harvard Press. You got all kinds of names. So this ain't just little Stiley Hayward in Daytona Beach from New London, Connecticut. No, I am borrowing the brain. And when we look at Mary to Moose Maz, and this is going to be one of these studies that it's not going to be one day. We've got a total of, and you know me, we've got a total of 16 pages. Page 16 is the documented information of copyright. And I give all these people the credit in this study. And we're going to look at the contents of Mary Tammuz Mass, the Tammuz Mass, who, the Bible, a resurrection, where, what, Adonis, when, the morning, Ishtar, Inanna, women, marriage, Jesus versus Tammuz. That's four categories, including the category of references, which, you know, I'm not going to do a study, and bibliography. Six. Six. <laughs> Reference points. For us to look at Tamu. And this study is by Dr. Stiley William Hayward. I am a doctor of theology. I earned my degree. I can show you the diploma. And maybe I'll put the diploma at the end of this. Because I want you to see the pagan world. And I want you to see the Bible world. And you can't worship God in Belial. So. Ezekiel 8.14. I think we're going to try to do three topics Ezekiel 8, 14, Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. That's a fallen God. Here's the printed information. I got to look on my screen. Uh, 
I can get you to print the doc if you want the document. And I can give you the word document. You let me know somehow, and I'll, I'll, I'll get you the document. And I'm not going to cover this up. I'm not going to hide this up. And for you Christians out there, well, I can have my Easter, I can have my Christmas. Go ahead. That's okay. At the judgment seat of Christ, you'll find out that what I'm telling you is right and you're wrong. But I'm not going to force you. I'm, I do these studies for the growing of Christians. So let's look at who. In Zui, which is spelled D-U-M-U-Z-I-D, almost like D-U-M-B. But in Zuzi, later known by the alternative name of Temu. And that's what we saw in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 8, verse 14. So in Zui is who we're talking about in Ezekiel 8. It's derived from the Sumerian words meaning faithful son. This is my beloved son and who I'm well pleased. Already, letter A of who we have seen an Antichrist type. All right, so would we follow now with Tammuz? In Zui, who is Tammuz, is, is a meaning Sumerian faithful son. In Sumerian poem, Inuzi is referred to my Dhamma, Dhamma, D A M D A M U, which means my son. The title is just called as Mary Tammuz Matt. You don't celebrate the birthday of Christmas. You celebrate the birthday of the faithful son, or my son, my son. In Zui. The name is usually applied to him in, a, in his role as the personification of the power that causes the sap to rise in trees and plants. Oh, so we have a tree. We have plants. We have sap. I believe in the Bible it says the Lord or God's trees are full of sap. I believe that's in Psalm. Damas is is the name most clearly associated with Drumas, which is Dazumi, returned in autumn after the dry season ended. The name Temu seems to have been derived from Akkadian form of Tamuzai, D-A-M-M-U-Z-I, based on the early Sumerian Damuzu, or Amazon. I'm maybe pronouncing these names wrong. I tried to look up how to say them. Some of these names they don't have. I can't find them how to say it, but D-A-M-U-Z-I-D. The flawless one. We've got the faithful son, we got my son, and we got the flawless young. We've got an antichrist here. Which later standard Sumerian became Demuzet or Demuzai. His own name, Demuzet, D U M U Z I D. And two variant designations of, for him, Amaga, Mother Milk, and Ailula, Multiplier of Pasture, Fields, Rain, suggests that he actually was the power of everything that a shepherd Faithful son, my son, the flawless one, pastor, and shepherd. 
Christian, who does that sound like? Yeah, you're not going to like the rest of this study. And you probably won't get part two and three and how many parts there are. Because I'm going to kick your gods and I'm going to kick your holiday. With the truth. And have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth. It suggests that he's actually with the power of everything that a shepherd might wish for. Grass to come up in the desert. Healthy lambs to be born. And milk to be plentiful in the mother animals. Family. The family of Haman. Or Inzui. Which is the same. <clears throat> you ready? Drum roll please. In a primary console are the goddess Inanna. Uh, you remember Inanna? We mentioned her in Estar, Easter in Disguise. And Anna would become la later known for Estar, and then later to be Easter. And we got Mary Tamu's mask. I'm gonna keep my I'm gonna keep my Christmas. I'm gonna keep my Easter. You mean with a guy who is a papal son, my son, the sap that runneth in the trees, the flawless one, the shepherd, and a primary consort of the goddess Anna, which is later known as John Easter. I call this guy the Antichrist. I call it Antichrist mask. You got it wrong. It's the Antichrist mask. But you're not going to listen any further because you don't want the truth. Sumerian mythology. And what you're going to do is say, uh, uh, Stolly said it wrong. He didn't get that word right. Yeah. Little, little details. Let's see how you do. Let's say we take any chapter of chapter 1 through 10 of first chronicles and see how well you do let's see how well you can read number seven without thinking about what you got to do that tomorrow or today without getting distracted so sumerian mythology demus's sister was Gishtina and anna g-e-s-h-t-i-n-a and and a so we're looking at his family now just checking see how much time we got the goddess of agriculture or farm fertility easter and dream interpretation you ever know anybody who wants to know what the dreams say well this Tammuz's sister, Gishititina, Aina, is the goddess of agriculture, fertility, Easter, dream interpretation. That's what Joseph did. This is Mary Tammuz, man. Let's, let's go back again. Let's, let's, look at, let's look at this. He's a faithful son. He's called my son. He brings sap in the tree. He's the flawless one. He's a shepherd. He wants lambs and he wants milk. His his consul, his wife, is Anna, which is known as Estar. And his sister is agriculture, fertility, and dream interpretation. Remember what I said? It's not Christmas. It's anti-Christmas. And People are not going to watch this whole thing, but remember I said, I've got one full page of notes that I am going to try to include on YouTube and SoundCloud of people's brains that I have picked. I'm not full of it. His father, Aki, 
E-N-K-Y, is rarely mentioned. And his mother, the goddess Jutler, D-U-T-T-U-R, is representation of a U, a female she, Rachel. Langdon, who's one of the names mentioned here in, in the bibliology of who knows what he's talking about, though not a copycatter, repeatedly refers to Tammuz as the virgin mother. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me go back. I'm going to take this. I'm taking this study very slow. Faithful son. Behold, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. My son. You find that all through the scripture about Jesus. Hebrews, Psalm. This, this day, my, my beloved son. The sap that rises in the tree. And Psalm says, the trees of the Lord are full of sap. He associates the flawless one, the sinless one. He's called the shepherd. And his consort is Easter. And like I said, when we did Easter in disguise, Esther, that's the queen of heaven. Do you know who the Catholics say the queen of heaven in Jeremiah? They say it's Mary. And now we've got Tammuz, and he re refers as the virgin mother. We're going to get into Christmas about this gentleman. We're going to get on a study of resurrection of Tammuz. We're going to get women weeping for Tammuz, and we see that in Ezekiel 8.14. Listen, when those women, when Jesus died, went away weeping on the Sabbath, preparing spices for his death. This is the Antichrist. And Christmas ought to be Antichrist. This is the character. Some of you, oh, he's wearing a hat. I like this hat. I don't want to. I want to do my study with this hat. Purpose through read. Leave my hat alone. London, though not a copyright, repeatedly refers to Tammuz as the virgin mother. He refers here to the earth. Mother Earth. Not a female figure who literally gives birth to Tammuz. Mother Earth. Mother Earth, Green Earth, Celebrate Earth Day is in relation to Tamu and Esther, Easter. Love your Earth. Inzui, D U M U Z I D, which is another name for Tamu, Sipad, S I P A D. Are you ready? The Shepherd, capital S. That's John chapter 10. This is the one you celebrate on Christmas. And he's called the Shepherd, capital S. I'm going to give you the references. And if you would like, email me somehow. I will give you the word document free of charge I will send you the word document if you like if I can find it I'll give you the S star free of charge I'll give you both free of charge if you want to send something that's between you and the Lord but Tamuz is called the shepherd let's go back let's go back we're going to take our time on this called the faithful son called my son he causes the sap to run in the trees he comes in the autumn he's a shepherd that wants to 
you know, the grass or the animals, the land to be born and the milk. His other side is called Ishtar. Uh, he's referred to as the Virgin Mother, Mother Earth, and he's called the Shepherd. Demuza, uh, uh, Enzui, D-U-M-U-Z-I-D, has or was believed to be the provider of milk. What is milk in the Bible? It's the word. John chapter 1, verse 1 is the word. The Father, the word, and is it the Holy Spirit or the... I forget what over there in 1 John. I, I know my Bible's over there. Friend, we just started this study, and let me see. We're 20 minutes into our study. And we have seen an antichrist. And John tells in his epistle, there are many antichrists. This is one of them. And this was all before the birth of Jesus Christ. This is found in the book of Ezekiel. And this goes hand in hand with Easter. Easter, Esther gets pregnant. And on December 25th, nine months later, she gives birth to a baby. And that baby's not Jesus, it's Tamu, his own mother, whom Alexander the Great has is said to be to be born of his own mother and to be claimed to be the son of God. Let's keep reading. In Zui, the shepherd was believed to be a provider of milk, which was rare seasonal product in ancient summer due to the fact that it could not easily be stored without spoiling. I read about a king that fell where she gave him milk in a lordly dish. That's okay. I mean, if you're a Christian, you want to turn this off by now, or you don't want to listen anymore, that's okay. You hang on to your God. And you're rejecting Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to force you. I'm just giving you the facts. And Zui was also the farming deity associated with the growth of plants. And again, this is Tamu. A ritual associated with Igar Temple in Nippur, N I P P U R, equates Inzui with a snake god, is steering. I S T A R A N. He's a shepherd that's a snake. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the dragon and the, 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 this old serpent, the devil and the dragon, Revelation 12. Have you not with your family fallen on your knees already and repented of Christmas? You do bow down before that tree. You gotta water it, don't you? You get down on your knees. Don't you get down on your knees to get the gifts? And yet the gift of Jesus Christ. Alright, we'll keep going. So we got is steering a snake god. Who's in ritual is described of having died. Yeah, if you love the Lord Jesus Christ and study your Bible, you've already seen it here, and you're not surprised. You're like, oh, that's, wow. I mean, I may not have heard this before, but, you know, that's no surprise. And there's some people right now, they've got to take a red pill because, you know, their, their blood pressure. They've got to take the green pill before they call their shrink. My God, it's always picking on our holiday. I'm kicking your holiday. You know, you know, my things I put on my on my Facebook, you know, the kicking, this is one of them. With the truth. Sanctifying through the through thy truth, thy word is true. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to get you out of the cult world. I'm trying to get you at the judgment seat of Christ. You get more gold, silver, and precious stones than wood, hay, or stubble. I'm trying to get you out of the world. 
and many churches are celebrating what we're talking about, and even the pastor behind the pulpit don't know what he's doing. And don't you think he's going to have to give an account? If Jesus said in Matthew 12, every man shall give an account of every idle word, don't you think that the pastor that puts the Christmas tree to, and celebrates the Christmas and, and is going to have to give an account for the anti-Christ anti mass? I'm reading to you. Now, I know there are going to be some people that are going to, Pastor, Pastor, this guy named Stolly Hayward, look at this video, listen to the soundtrack, and they're going to rub it off as the guy's insane, the guy's cuckoo, the guy's crazy, run them out of town. And for those that are on YouTube can see, I am opening up the pages, and you get a copy of one full pages of the information. And the people who know what they're talking about. Let's read on. Inzui was identified with the god Am Yishimagele Anna. A M A U S U M G A L A N A, who was originally a local god worship in the city language. So in the city of language, you got this god Amashukele, which is Inzui, which is Tamu. Tamu's city was one of Tamu's city was Lagos. And some of texts, Amashiga Gusha Na, Tamu's, Inzui, is described as a heroic warrior. Amashigu Nuna and Inzui is associated with the date palm and its fruit. Another tree. In Mesopotamian peoples, the date palm represents steadiness because it was one of the few crops that could be harvested all year, even during the dry season. There's that tree again. Jeremiah chapter 10. I was in a church one time. It was Christmas time. And they had a Christmas, little Christmas tree, artificial one up on the piano. And we're going through it. We did Jeremiah chapter 9. And then we came back the next week. We went to Jeremiah chapter 11. And you know what Stiley did. Stiley went up to the preacher and said, Preacher, you missed Jeremiah chapter 10. That's no big deal. I said, what? Trying to cover up the Christmas tree you have on the piano over there? And eventually he told us to leave. What was the other one I put up? The junkyard dog? Yeah. I just speak the truth. I've been kicked out of churches because of the truth. I had a church kick us out because I said I didn't like their VBS decoration. Oh, yeah, later on he came up with a list of things, you know, after trying to think it out, but that was the main reason. And this is the kind of stuff that angers people, too. So, let's keep on reading. As shown on his common label, Sipad, S I P A D, the shepherd, Tamuz was essentially a pastoral deity in the field. The shepherd, the Antichrist. As such, he is called the faithful son. This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. Jesus Christ without spot. I find no fault in him. A lamb without spot. The sinless one. But of the fresh waters which come from the earth. What do you tell that woman? I'm the water of life. This is Tamu. Mary Tamu's mask. This is the one you celebrate at Christmas. And there's Lang L A N G dot 
T-I-6-N. And that's a reference. I don't know what that reference is, but it's somebody knows more than I do. So I put it in there. I'm copying from other people's brains. And whatever this line, T-I-6-N, states that Tamu's Saipad, what's the other name? I forget. Inzui is a reference to the shepherd who's a faithful son, fresh waters, which comes from the earth. And we read about Mother Earth, the virgin mother. I like my hat. The closest title that I could find to an, a, other sun titles above has other titles included. This is what Mother's Milk, God of the Date Bomb, and the image of EA, EA, capital EA, whatever that is. I couldn't find it. You know what mother's milk is? It's the word of God. In Mesopotamia, he's called Tamu. In Samaria, he's called Zipzam. Or Jonah. Jozam. Who's that? D-U-M-U-Z-I. In Phoenician, he's called Adonis. And we're going to come back to Adonis later. And we're going to find him in the Greek. But as far as Tamu's now, Mary Tamu's, Tamu's mass, or as I have now called it, the Antichristmas, we have Zinzui, who's Tamu's, we have the faithful son. And again, I quote, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. He's called the, my son. Psalms in Hebrew speaks about Jesus as the son of God. He has a reference to the saps that run in trees. And Psalm says, the trees of the Lord are full of sap. He's associated with autumn. He's associated with the pastor. P-A-S-T-U-R-E. He's called a shepherd. His other half is called Eshtar, Easter. He has a sister in as relation to agriculture, fertility, and dream interpretation. His mother is a representation of the you, a female she. And he's referred to, Tammuz is referred to repeatedly as the virgin mother. He's, he's believed to be the provider of milk, and milk is the word of God. And Jesus Christ. He's associated with the growth of plants. He's associated with the snake like God is steering. That is described as having died. Yeah, the Antichrist, Revelation chapter 12, the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, the dragon. He's called a heroic warrior. He's associated with date palm. He's called the shepherd, capital S, Saipat. Again, he's called the faithful son. Fresh waters come from him, the earth. Jesus told the woman, I'm the living water. And in Mesopotamia, he's called Tamu. In Phoenicia, he's called Adonis. And that's that's a Greek god. And we got... That's 34 minutes there. I think next time we're going to look at the Bible. We're, we're going we're to stop there. Like I said, on my YouTube, and my, I'm going to try to give you... i got one page, one full page, it looks like, of the references. In the brains that I borrow copyrighted information. I'm doing this with a fair law copyright. I'm borrowing the brain of these people. And I'm going to try to list the name. If you like, email me. I, I will I will send you free again. Mary Tamu's mass. Or, and I'll send you S-Star in disguise. Free of charge. 
Want to send me something? That's okay. Because I want you, I want you to see that these holidays are not Christian at all. And I believe, in my heart, Christians need to come out of them. Now it's up to you. I'm not going to force you. But there will be a second study, and we'll look at the Bible in Tamu. Hopefully, it'll be next Monday. So we're going to try to do these on Monday. Um, I got an ear doctor's appointment coming up and hopefully it's surgery. So when I ha if I have the surgery, ever get that done, there might be days I, I may not be able to do anything, you know, recovering, but I'll do my best. Tomorrow, Lord willing, in the afternoon, the biblical truth of our hymns. On Thursdays, Lord willing, oh, I, Thursday I got a doctor's appointment. I won't be able to make it Thursday. Uh, Friday is our Bible study in the park. I'll try maybe Wednesday to do the study of evil. Wednesday or Saturday or I'll have to do it next week. So I got things coming up, but we're gonna, I'm going to try to stay faithful to this. Pray for me. Pray for our listeners because this is vital information. And people will find the littlest excuse that I didn't pronounce it wrong, right, or he's wearing a hat, not wearing a suit and tie. I'm doing this out of my house. I'm doing this for your edification. I'm doing this because this is devilish. This is satanic. And this is in the church. It needs to come out. God bless.